right, all right. Welcome back to Let's Play Sierra Games. Or in this case, uh, what about Let's Play Tsunami Games? Uh, that is right. What we're playing here is Blue Force. So we're going through the introduction uh, where it sets up the story. Two cops come in, he throws something at them, he drives off, they get in the car and they give chase. You see this great scene where they're cutting through and this truck cuts them off and apparently that was enough to stop them. A few days later, someone with long hair breaks in, shoots the father, shoots the mother, and leaves you, the son, alive. And this is their funeral. And then 11 years later, you are um, welcomed onto the police force. So we get the cool intro of them driving like motorcycles, doing skids with the car, uh, doing some practice sessions of arresting people and cuffing them and how to do it correctly and doing search. Some uh, gun training and boom! Slain officer's son graduates number one in the police academy, so that's you. So, Officer Jack Ryan. So the day starts off with you on your motorcycle driving in, first day of work. So, day one, new cop. So let me, I still had my old save games there, so give me a quick second. I'll clear them out here. And then what we'll do is we'll do a new save and day one start. So I'm doing basically the same thing if you watched my other playthroughs where once the save games get full, I'll go back into the directory, move them out into a new folder, and then basically clear out the space and create the save game. So you'll see me do that with this, with day one, day two, and day three, and then day four. And so we pick up a rap sheet for Forest. Um, the game operates very much like if you've played Police Quest uh, from Sierra, uh, it operates very much the same manner as the Police Quest games. So you're even kind of starts the same, right? Where I think in basically every police quest game, it always starts off with a briefing. So you kind of understand the situation of what's going on. And so, you know, day one, get to talk to people, get to know people, see what's what. And then we're going to go ahead and head outside. The first motorcycle is yours. Now you're going to see basically this whole thing all over again, because what I failed to realize is um, you'll see me drive around kind of looking at the map to see where everything's at. Uh, we're gonna go to grandma's house. Everything looks good, cool. So we're gonna go over here. And if you look, that car is illegally parked. Uh, I think it's there pretty much all the days. And so you can come ticket it and get points. Nothing ever comes of it though. Like, uh, like if you go there day two and it's still there, uh, you can try to ticket it again. And it says you've already ticketed this car, which I would think if the ticket's not on the windshield, you do like a second ticket, kind of like a warning, like, hey, your car is still here, illegally parked, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, you're, you're gonna kind of see this all over again because if you look to the right, there's that little brown compartment. I wasn't really paying attention when I was told to basically go to the marina, which is now, and you end up arresting someone. Um, I didn't read them their Miranda rights. And I realized that just after I arrested them that I never read them the Miranda rights. Which means this dude could technically get off um, because no one met him, read him his correct rights. Um, so I end up going back to the start, uh, basically kind of looping back and coming back here. So basically you'll see th these two. Um, this woman found Skip, who... Um, clearly has a black eye and he says his mom is still on the boat so what you're going to do is you're going to call for backup and let them know the situation and you're going to head over there now you'll see me um, when we play I think when I come back through there's that fire thing that's right at the edge you'll see me pick that up um, that is one of the things that I missed when I previously played the game uh, a long time ago and got stuck so we're on the boat, we see someone go into the door, and there's the guy. So he's got a woman hostage, now we gotta talk him down. Now, your buddy, Doug, if I remember correctly is his name, uh, Doug kind of almost screws you over uh, day one and drops his gun. <laughs> and 
and you're like, uh, just Doug. <laughs> but you end up talking to the guy and you pretty much threaten him that they're going to be scraping him off the floor. So you have to arrest him and then search him. And then uh, essentially when, you know, kind of grab the gun off the bed, got his uh, ID to fill out the form. But that's when I talked to Doug and he says, hey, I'll drop him off. And I was like, cool. And shortly after I realized, ah, I didn't read him as Miranda rights. So the whole point of that being is in that little brown compartment is both your ticketing for ticketing that car that is illegally parked, as well as a car that is your Miranda, your, um, Miranda rights. So every time you arrest someone, you basically have to click the Miranda rights card on them. However, spoiler alert, um, doesn't matter because <laughs> you'll arrest this guy there's the thing I was talking about from the fire thing. You'll arrest this guy, and then eventually you'll arrest two uh, what appear to be gangbangers. Um, and they end up getting out of jail. Now, if, if, you, if you're not really too sure of the game, you may think, hey, I messed something up. Let me go back and redo it. That's literally what I thought when I played this again, because it had been since I really played this. I play it off and on since 2015. Well, I've played it off and on since I've had it and always get to day three and got stuck uh, until around 2015 when I finally figured out how to beat it. And I've played it off and on since then, but it's so weird that they get off and if you're new to the game, you think you did something wrong. Like, can I restore and try to do something differently? Like, what did I not do? But it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll see that Doug backs you up and says, hey man, he did everything by the book. So they do, the two people that you actually read the Randall rights to, doesn't really matter, um, except for the points, uh, they both get out of jail, or all three of them, because it's uh, this guy Green and then the two would-be uh, gangbangers. Um, but they get out of the jail, and that's, it's not that you did anything wrong, it's actually setting up the story that these guys are connected. Right, so you find out with the gangbangers that they're using like stolen uh, weapons from a military thing, which is all what this all ties up to. So you'll see here I've restored, and we're gonna go back. I'm gonna restart. And I'm just gonna speed through this again because um, you already know I literally just talked about it. But that's why. So you're going to see all of this again because I realized I didn't give them Miranda rights and that needs, well, doesn't need to happen, but it's better off point-wise. So I'll go ahead and shut up and let this portion of the game speed through. Oh, I should say, there's a compartment that I was talking about. So we're back here where he is threatening the person and your good old partner is about to drop his gun and you scorn him for doing so after arresting him. But once you get him cuffed, which will happen here in a moment, uh, once you get him cuffed and search him, uh, that's when you click the card on him. 
and the card will actually do the Miranda rights. There you go. So you talk to her and she explains that he got drunk, got angry. Um, he was upset that Skip's cards were on the floor and Skip couldn't pick them up fast enough. So. And then uh, now we're gonna head in over to the jail to talk about him, or not talk about him, but to uh, book him, I should say. But what I was gonna try to say is when you go over there and then go in, and there's Jim Walls. Um, when you go inside and you talk to him and look at him, uh, it says he looks comfortable and he'll get out at any time. And uh, so that's kind of foreshadowing that something's up, right? that he's so confident that he's going to get out. And it's interesting, like when you look at her, the girl that's at the information booth, it says like, hey, she's someone that looks like you want to get to know better. Um, so it feels like she would potentially be a uh, romantic relationship, like it, there's a way to get to know her, but apparently not because uh, all you ever do is you say hi, you ask her name, she says something, and then says, ooh, what's the cure for cutting words? And she says, you know, by applying a hint <laughs> subtly or whatever. Um, so nothing ever comes of that. Um, and then you want to come back to the police station, turn in all the evidence. Uh, and you'll notice that there is something new on the board, and you read it. Um, it talks about there's some activity in your area to be uh, keep an eye out. So we have the evidence turned in. All right, and then we're gonna just drive around. Let's see where we're gonna go next. And it doesn't matter because no matter what you pick, you're gonna end up pulling over these uh, two would-be gangbangers. So you'll definitely want to call for backup. Get one of them out of the car. You're going to talk to him while your partner, Doug, who dropped his gun, is going to keep an eye on the other guy. Uh, you know, kind of wish there was someone else besides Doug. <laughs> Just mostly because you're trusting your life to him and he gave up his gun so quickly. Um, so uh, one thing I'll talk about real quick is in the in the uh, manual uh, it gives you a number of codes um, for example 101 means bad reception 102 means good reception 104 is received message uh, 1013 is weather check 1015 is prisoner in custody 1027 is a subject check where you check to see if they have any warrants uh, 1035 is backup requested 1097 is arrived at scene 1098 is um, cleared the scene, I'm now available, and 1099 is emergency, officer needs assistance. Now, I don't know why they gave you half of these codes, because the only ones you really use are the 104, which is message received, the 1015, which you are to indicate the prisoner is in custody, which you usually follow up with a 1027 for a subject check to check for warrants. And then um, 1090 or 1035 to request backup, which we do frequently. Uh, 1097 is you arrived at the scene, and then 1098 is cleared the scene. Uh, I never used the 101, 102, the 1013, or the 1099. So 
So anyway, you go inside the thing, you check. Uh, you want to make sure you pull the back seat lever because that's where the gun and the wig are hidden. So when you check that against the wrap sheet, you'll see that they are connected to the situation going on around. So when you go inside, it's the same deal. When you talk to them, they're pretty much confident that they're going to get out. Um, to fill those forms, by the way, here, what you have to do is click on the form, opens up that little window, and you click the ID onto the form, and uh, it'll actually fill it out. And again, they both seem very confident that they're going to get out soon, which, spoiler alert, they actually do. Don't worry. If you see that, you did not mess up. Uh, it's actually supposed to happen because it alludes to something going on. So once again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to turn in the two guns, the wig, and the bullets that you found as evidence. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and change. And that's pretty much going to wrap up uh, day one. And what you'll do is you'll head to your grandmother's because that's where you live. Or I assume that's where you live because that's where he always sleeps and wakes up. So... I'm assuming he still lives with grandma. And then she tells you that um, child protection service is called. Um, the kid Skip, who you helped out at the marina, his card is missing. So he, you're asked to essentially go and find it. So what we're gonna do is after we kind of look around, one thing you wanna note is this uh, memorial thing over here for your father. You're going to want to note his batch number because you're going to need that in a little bit. Um, you can look at it at any time once you come in the den, but just keep that in mind. Right, so let's head over to the marina where you would think the card is lost. Head for the boat. Uh, but there's actually nothing you can do on the boat it's locked and this had me thrown off for a while because this door in the front kind of looks like the side you would have come onto the boat but it's actually not so you actually have to click to the north to exit the boat and it threw me off because there is that side view so when you first pull up to the marina you can tell that there is a left but the, the, the option for left and then kind of lower left, it's kind of fairly close to one another. One will take you to the boat or to your bike. The other will actually take you here, where if you, uh, or if you talk to him, um, he'll just say, oh, you know what? The fishing lure you're looking for is fresh water. And what you have to do is give the note. And he goes, oh man, yeah, I found that card. And says, oh, Skip will be happy. So, and you'll come back to the boat rental um, a little bit later because he gives you those coupons to use the boat anytime for being the great guy that you are. So now we have the card. We're going to head over to Child Protective Services, which is by Grandma's house. We're going to go inside. And you're going to give the card to Skip. He's going to be super excited. And Grandma said, hey, or, you know, you suggest, why don't I bring them over for dinner? So once again, that almost seems like, could this be a romantic relationship about to develop? But it's not. <laughs> Unlike Police Quest, uh, where you um, develop a relationship with a woman of the evening, even though you take her and her kid out for a romantic walk on the beach here, there is no relationship here. Because Lyle, who is kind of like your father figure after your father was killed, um, he says, oh, now you're picking up on battered women? And Jake says, no, it's not like that at all. She just needed a friend. So, sorry, that's my Corgi on uh, full defense mode. That was not the dog in the game. So what you're going to do here is um, you'll notice a few times you're going to throw this stick. And it kind of looks like one of those slingshot sticks. But one of the times when he brings it back, it's going to be a different stick. And what you're going to want to do, he even says, oh, what is that? <laughs> You're supposed to look at it, just FYI, not pick it up and throw it, which, you know, it seems weird. He says, oh, what is that? So it kind of looks like he's already looked at it. Notice it's not a stick. Uh, but if you just click the hand on it, <laughs> he just throws it again. 
but thankfully it doesn't break it that you know you throw it and it doesn't come back um, he'll keep bringing that back until you look at it and then once you look at it and say hey this isn't the same stick uh, you notice it's like a piece of a crate uh, after that you can go and talk to her and said hey it's getting cold let's go back inside and when you get inside Lyle is going to be there and he basically says I just want to come by and see how you're doing and when you talk to her that's when uh, like I said it seems like oh maybe this whole walk on the beach with her kid thing is developing a romantic relationship and Lyle says oh you're picking up on battered women I get it what they're implying here you know she is a victim uh, she's you know vulnerable at that point she's whatever but it, it feels very judgmental the way Lyle says it and so Jake basically uh, dismisses it as no she just needed a friend so no r romantic relationship there uh, so this is where granny says hey you know skip wanting his cards uh, made me think of when you collected I put the box in the den and when you open it there is a um, like a safe and the only thing in there is an old Indian nickel. Um, the code to the safe is your father's badge number, which is 172, if I remember correctly. Uh, and you put that, get the nickel. Uh, you're going to use that nickel later as a distraction for the guy who uh, does the fishing boat thing. So when you go and you read, or when you go, you'll see a note that says, hey, uh, Green and the two gangbangers, the DA got them both off because of because of uh, some complication or whatever that you didn't do right. And um, so, you know, the, the acting captain, if you will, um, basically says, hey, you know what? They let him out. Don't sweat it. Uh, every rookie makes mistakes. <laughs> Uh, I was cleaning my gun and shot myself because the gun was still loaded. Whoops. Um, says every rookie makes mistakes. Don't sweat it. Um, but then Doug backs you up and says, no, man, he did it by the books. Like, what's up? You know, we bust our ass off to get this crap off the street. And some DA gets him off on some unknown, like, type of technicality. So... And then here's that scene again, because when I went to clean my gun, because inspection is today, uh, you have to make sure the gun is unloaded, FYI, or else you shoot your brains out. So make sure your gun is unloaded before you clean it. <laughs> so day two begins, and what I'm going to do is the same thing I always do. Uh, while it's paused on the screen, if you will, I'm actually going back and taking the save game, moving it into a folder called like day two or day one, so that I can make a day two folder. So now you can see all the save games are clear. Uh, so we've cleaned the gun. Now we'll go outside and do the inspection. It's great that you show up last to the inspection. <laughs> and then it's funny because he, you know, it does a little cutscene and he goes, Ryan, now uh, you're actually looking really good here. Uh, you know, your dad would be proud of you, son. So at first it seems like he's about to yell at you, but then he pays you a compliment and then walks off. And so we're going to get on our bike. I'm going to go back here. Let's see, you can see that the car is still here. Oh, and I should point out, uh, this is something I found out here, that every day apparently you have to get your ticketing th your ticketing thing and your Miranda rights card and you come over here talk to Lyle um, what's they're setting up basically you'll eventually end up working with Lyle because Lyle says hey you know what I've been thinking about that crate that you found uh, on the beach by your grandma's house it could have come from any one of these islands but if we spend time like looking at those islands it could take us years and we might never find out which way it came from but according to the waves and the drift it should be in this general direction um, and they're pretty much setting up that uh, something is about to happen to Jake and um, you're gonna end up working with Lyle and here we have <laughs> this is what I mean that it's the same thing in police quest um, where your partners 
like pretty much useless almost. And so Doug is here and he's like, hey man, I got a guy with a DUI. Uh, he won't get out of the car. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna call the situation in, say, hey, I arrived. Um, hey, Doug, you got anything in the truck? And he says, I don't know. Let me open the trunk for you. Even though this is my car, let me open the trunk for you. Um, and there's other stuff in there, but the only thing you need is the thing, uh, I call it a buster, um, because all you do is go over and you smash the window and open the door and he tumbles out and he's like, hey, you know, sorry about that officer. Uh, you're right, I think fresh air would be good. So you arrest him. Um, when you try to read the Miranda rights to him, it says, you know, hey, your partner's got it. So you don't have to worry about reading the Miranda rights to this guy. So that, you know, the two people that essentially read the Miranda rights to and actually do it right, eh, they get away. So there's that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clear the situation, say that the subject is in custody and that you're available. And when you drive off, Bam, there it is. That's what I was talking about. Something is about to happen to Jake. So here you are on the second day on the job and someone runs a red light or did someone do it on purpose to try to take you out? Uh, I wish they would have tied that in to say that, you know, whoever did it, did it on purpose. Like it would have been even kind of cool if it was like the gangbanger's car and you know, something like that something to tie it all in that you were actually just tried to get taken out to show it's a bigger story rather than just a random guy who just ran you over uh and you have a flashback here um where you say hey i heard someone in the house and you start getting these pieces of the flashback that lead to the murder of your mother and father And uh, when you do, uh, the reason for that is these flashbacks will eventually build up to seeing actually who did it, and you'll see that person again. And uh, near the end, that's... <laughs> uh, uh, so, before yeah, near the end, I that's why I, I do what I do, and I start laughing about how I messed up. So here, this took me a second, what you actually have to do is click on the icon of what you're trying to do. So instead of clicking the letter, you're actually gonna click the icon. And you'll go through, uh, you'll note your mom's name, father's name and all that. One of those is the password you can probably guess. Um, and you go in, there's some blueprints to be found. There's a letter um, from your dad to your mom. That's where you're gonna get her name. Um, and then you can go into the other directories. There's one for Tsunami, which was just basically promos for Tsunami games. Um, what you wanna do is go to the blueprints, print the blueprints, because we're gonna need those. So if you print a blueprint, is it a blueprint print? I don't know, all right. Anyway, so now pretty much you don't have to worry about being a cop anymore. Um, Lyle has come over and said, hey man, uh, why don't you come swing by and kind of hang out with me, work with me for a while. It'll kind of keep you busy, keep your mind off of stuff and stuff like that. And uh, you agree. And then so when he goes to check something, you pick up the folder and you'll get a flashback. And so kind of click around, click on the different things. What you're going to want to do is actually uh, click on the folder again eventually. There's a fax machine. And when you do, a microfiche thing will appear. And that big computer over to the right is a microfiche uh, reader. And you're going to go through and basically just arrow down and read about the murder of your mother and father. Um, there are evidence numbers, which I wrote down because I couldn't remember if I needed those. The, those 1154 dash. I was thinking that I was gonna to have to go to the police station or something like that and get uh, requests for these, but you actually don't. It's just more information. Um, and then Lyle comes back and you talk to him and the, the ATF uh, are kind of holding back, say, hey, we need some more evidence. Um, so, you know, show him the blueprints and they're like, hey, you know, that could be some information that we need. So what you're going to do 
is you're going to use the fax machine and put the uh, use the blueprints on the fax machine first and then select police and they'll give you a printout and from there you find out that he hangs out at a certain place so you'll head there um, with Lyle and it's weird Lyle's driving but it's you who starts the engine of the car because you have to choose where to go so you're gonna go there give him that report say hey you know what I actually have a rap sheet on him uh, let me go ahead and get that for you and here's a photo of him so now we have his rap sheet and we can go on from there So now we're going to go to a bar, which should be familiar from the opening scene of the uh, game. And you're going to talk to the bartender, whose name is Tony. And you're going to ask him if you've ever seen the guy. And then what you need to do is show him actually the photo. And then he goes, oh, you know, as a matter of fact, I do. You have to show it again. And he says, you know, I know him as like snowman or whatever. And he says, you should talk to the woman at the bar, and she just ignores you. Once you show that uh, police badge, then she opens up and says that, uh, you know, her boyfriend kind of knew him. And she says, there's another name you should check in. Um, his name is Weasel. And so she writes Weasel on this napkin and hands it to you like it's a coded message. But it's because you're going to have to basically go to the next place which is the alley cat, which is a bowling alley. And you ask the manager there, once we go inside, talk to him. Ah, the 80s and 90s where you can just smoke indoors. I'm not a smoker, just think it's so weird when you see that type of stuff. I assume that's a cigarette in his mouth, anyway. Um, looks like the kind of dude who'd just be like, I don't care, smoke inside. Um, but you show him the rap sheet and he's like, hey man, I ain't going down for that. There's more to it. And once you keep talking to him, he says he'll make a deal and you still book him. You tell Lyle to book him and Lyle takes him away into the car. And you talk to him, say, hey, can you tell me if he adds anything? And he says, yep, he's got this key. Let me get it for you. So you have this random key that it has just a W on it. So we're gonna get in the car now, I, if I remember correctly, I end up going to the police department and then going to um, the courthouse, thinking we need to drop him off, see if he's in jail, like see if that's what Lyle did with him. But he's not in jail. <laughs> he's apparently still sitting in the back seat with us as we cruise around. Um, but we have what we have to do is go to the bikini hut, and there's that little trailer, and then Lyle says, you know what? I'll go ahead and take him to the, uh, you know, go take him in while you break in, not break in, but go into his place, which is this little hut. And the things you want to look at is the thing above the shelf, which is, if you look, it's the bullets that match. And then down to the lower left, just above the TV, there is a thing for uh, some boots. And you're going to want to definitely look at the boots. And then also they make note of... Um, they make note of the um, thing underneath the boots. So you're gonna to wanna to move the heel, and there's a note there. So once you do that, go back out, get in the car, head back to the office, uh, and he pretty much says, you know what? Why don't you go take a rest? It's been a long day. So I had the grandma's drive in and automatically go to sleep and it's the next day. So what we're gonna do now is I'm clearing out the save games so that I can save and day three. All right, so let's head down to the marina. What we're going to do is we're going to go rent a boat.
And this one at first took me a while, but then I remembered over to the left, and I'll do it afterwards. He has a massive uh, coin and stamp collection. And I only remembered this from before, but I'll show you after, after I do it. Um, so you say, hey, I want to rent a boat. Here's a coupon. He says, grab any that say rent. So there is one that says rent, but there's an FW there, and that's the future wave. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna show him the uh, the Indian nickel, and he goes in the back to um, grab it. And what you do is you grab the future wave key. So there it is. There's the uh, coin and stamp collection. Um, and make sure you grab that net. Remember where I said I got stuck on day three with a dog? Yeah. So you wanna make sure to grab that net. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to the future wave. Make sure you have the thing that's in that fire thing. I've already picked it up. And I thought it was the keys to the door, but watch what you're gonna do. You're gonna go in here. I thought it would get us in the back, but the back is actually unlocked. So if you click around, actually what you need to do is click on the potted plant. And then there's another set of keys in there. So so again, some might think, hey, he's doing this illegally. Uh, keep in mind. Uh, he is not a cop right now. He is actually working as a private investigator because he's working with Lyle. So I know uh, someone over at the Sierra Help Forums, which is sierrahelp.com forward slash forums. If you haven't been, I highly recommend stopping by, joining the forum. We're a great fun community. Some by the name of Not Bob Smith mentioned that one of the things that he disliked in this game is how Jake just willy nilly. Uh, goes into places like the boat, like the future wave, and then eventually over here at the warehouse, he'll do the same thing. Um, and what you need to do or need to understand is at this time, like I said, he's not acting as an officer. He doesn't have officer attire on. Um, he's dressed up as a normal civilian because he's doing the PI thing. So he's random, like, I'm just going to walk into the boat and do this sneaky stuff. Um, pretty sure that's why they did the accident to basically explain that. That's why he's not doing the warrant stuff and he's doing a PI. So in here it's dark. Uh, what you need to obviously do is work with the lights. And this initially took me a minute too. I was just turning, you see two secret compartments for power and stuff. Um, but there is a generator here. You can turn on the generator, but there needs to be a connection for the generator and that power club. So if you look on that thing, there's a, uh, a, uh, a power strip. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one end, plug it in there, take the other end, plug it into the generator to provide power to the generator. And exit out of that. Uh, and if I didn't mention it, you're going to throw the net on the dog before you get here. That's why you have to need the hook thing too afterwards. So then you go over here literally turning on all the power <laughs> just turn everything on it's fine turn everything on something and there it is so what you have to do is hit that and then that opens up a secret door now if you look there's no shadows over there right so everything's fine so if you look in there it's just empty but this one look in there oh we got weapons so what you're going to do is you're going to grab one and it's interesting because they have that toolbox that's in the back. And I guess it's there to indicate that that's what they use to open the weapons. But it stuck out so much that I was certain that there had to be something to the toolbox, but there isn't. So now essentially what you need to do is <laughs> cover your tracks. However, the last thing you're going to do is uh, turn off the lights. You have to do everything else first. So you have to unplug the cable, put the cable back, turn off the lights and basically backtrack. So close the door, unplug the cable. Um, you're gonna lock the door and uh, lock the door, close the gate, lock the gate. And then you're gonna use the, um, I don't know what that thing is called. I always just call it the fish hook. But use the fish hook to 
to get the uh, the net off the dog. Although for a while it took me a while to remember to use the fish hook, and that get, lets the dog free. And you'll make your way off the island, back to your boat. Oh, and when you first arrived, there's I was probably talking about something else because I don't remember mentioning it. There is that crate right there. That crate inside there is rags and a thing of I think it's kerosene, either kerosene or gasoline. Uh, you want to make sure to grab those because you're going to need it uh, the following day. So when you return, you're like, hey, thanks for that. I'm going to go ahead and return the keys. And you return both keys. So you don't even need to be sneaky about returning the future wave. You apparently just put both keys on there. And then you're going to make your way back. Start the ignition. And from the... From the um, Marina, what you're going to do is you're going to head over back to your good old punt partner, Lloyd. Talk to him about the ATF. Say, hey, look, these dudes have the guns and they match the record. So, and he says, good job. Maybe we can get the ATF involved now. So from there, head to Grandma's next day. So we're now on day four, which is the last day of the game. We're actually almost done. And as you can see, it's, I mean, short of um, <laughs> when I cleaned the gun and uh, still had it loaded and I blew my brains out. It's actually pretty difficult to actually really die in this game. So um, it makes the game pretty straightforward. It's a matter of finding out what to do um, and stuff like that. So day four, Lloyd says, hey, um, meet me over by the boats. You're going to go over here say, hey, here's a coupon. Can I rent another boat again? And he goes, yep, sure enough. So you just, the only one you need is the rent one because you no longer have the nickel, which is weird because when he looks at the nickel, he just looks at it and gives it back. If I remember correctly, I need to double check. Um, but the nickel just goes away. So no need for the future wave. Lyle's there. Again, make sure you have um, all the stuff you need because if you don't have the the um, the bottle and the kerosene uh, or the kerosene and the rags, you're going to be stuck here. And there is that little compartment behind your seat, so you know there's a screwdriver there. And I was thinking you're going to have to quietly uh, get into this thing, but nope. What you have to do <laughs> is grab, there's a bottle of alcohol, uh, but what you want is the flare. Now this threw me off for a bit because I was thinking, oh, we need to like, you know, smoke him out. Like, let's throw it into the vent. Um, I climbed the ladder, which was should have been an indication that there was something there to do. I knocked on the door and then they pretty much say, well, I guess there goes our element of surprise. So I was like, OK, so don't knock on the door. Let's go back, restore and uh, save the game at the future wave and see if we can figure out. So get the screwdriver, clearly unscrew that get the flare now to figure out how to put it in the vent that looks like an air vent to me thinking you know you throw it in there and smoke them out but actually when I climbed the ladder earlier that was an indication that the vent is the one that's right up there and that's what I actually need to do so I struggled here for a little while trying to figure out is there a specific order that you have to throw these things down into the vent uh, is this the right way to do it but as it turns out it's the wrong vent I'll get there eventually though I'll notice, because uh, I said smoke them out, and I was like, wait, let's throw them down. That thing. Oh, hey, that worked. All right, cool. So right after I literally saved the game to smoke them out, I figured out which vent it is, and sure enough, it starts to smoke. And he says, hey, don't shoot. I'm coming out. But he has a, a grenade. So you basically have to talk to him until he repeats himself, um, and you pretty much convince him, hey, you know what? If you do this, uh, you're you're gonna blow up, man. There's gonna be nothing left of you, and you're gonna die in vain. And so once you get hit, once um, you start repeating yourself, <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and cuff him, and he'll he'll go. And Lloyd will say, "Hey, you know what? I'll take him from here." So once again, cuff him, and as always, make sure you search him, and you end up taking the hand grenade because he replaces the pin, and you can bet. In a moment, you're going to end up using that hand grenade. So, what you're going to do is use the keys on the boat, and you will continue on, and you have him in the boat. And apparently, you and Lloyd separate and go separate ways. 
And so, you know, you say, all right, let's go. And there's a shooter. And sure enough, first thing I did, grenade, boom. But just like Space Quest, what you want to do is search their body and hey, he has a whistle. And you come up here and oh, there's Lloyd and he killed someone. But let's also search his body, uh, but he's got nothing. So you keep moseying along and the whistle, if you've not figured it out, is a dog whistle. So once you get to this screen, you don't need the net, which is also gone randomly. You use the dog whistle and it goes back into his kennel. You're going to go over here, use the key on the door, get inside. And now here's where you can actually die kind of quickly because you can see that the secret doors are already open and there's shadows over there. And so you try to go over there with the gun, bang, he shoots you. So don't go over there with the gun. Uh, what you have to do is be a little more tricky, but <laughs> I, you and I messed this part up. Um, so we're going to shut the door down. And the reason you have to put the door down, that kind of lets them know that someone's there, right? Um, and as soon as he comes out, uh, triggers a flashback. And you see his face, a much younger version of him, but it's him. And you draw your gun, and then I uh, couldn't figure out what to do, so I shot him. And then the DA comes out and says, well, you shot him from a <laughs> And then you shoot the DA, uh, which is not the right way to do it. So the reason you have to lower down the door, this is actually kind of tricky of the game. The reason you have to lower down the door is what you need to do is grab that yellow cable, because that's how you're going to restrain him. So it reminded me very much of Codename Iceman in that regard, is that the way to get the tape is really stupid. Um, it's on top of the fridge, it's really, really difficult. Uh, it looks like a bowl, because it's just a gray with like a black center, it looks like a bowl on the fridge. No matter what you did to look at the fridge, you couldn't see it. I felt like this was similar, because the door's already open, so the, the way to restrain them is already hidden behind the door. So when you talk to them and, you know, you pretty much convince them that, hey, uh, you do anything, we end this the hard way. So what you're going to do is you're going to tie him up and make sure you search him and you'll find stuff. You're going to take the other end of the rope, tie him up, and ATF will show up, finally. And uh, before you do, what you want to do is make sure you search him as well and uh, you get a little bonus. So... Um, you tell them about the blueprints and all that other stuff. You turn in all the evidence, and there you go. Bradford Green ends up in jail again. The guy who uh, murdered your parents ends up in jail again, and the DA ends up in jail. So the guy who murdered your uh, parents, uh, death by lethal injection. Uh, Bradford Green, here's his list of crimes. Uh, including what he had done, uh, he gets, I think it was 20 years, and then the DA gets same crimes, and I think he gets 15. And there you go. Thank you for playing Blue Force, and roll the credits. So, uh, overall, I actually really enjoyed the game. I thought it was a pretty good story. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's very difficult to die, except for cleaning the gun and near the end. Um, I don't know if you can dead end if you forget the net or the uh, fisher, because I don't know when, once you get to the island if it'll let you leave. Like, I don't know if you can actually go back. I've actually not tested that. But overall, I thought this was a really fun game. Really well put together. Um, great music, great graphics. So hopefully you enjoyed the commentary, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and share with others. I'd love you for it. All right, have a good one. Bye.